the hook that I love is when people take a snippet of the show itself and put it right at the beginning. This happens a lot with the true crime podcasts. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, where they'll say, and then she opened her shower and screamed. And you're like, what? What happened? They put that right at the beginning of the show. And you're going to listen through who knows how many ads and who knows how many little jingles interrupting the show because you have to find out what happened to the woman who opened her shower curtain. This is Burning Brightly, a podcast for Christian moms who are feeling called to build a business and share their light with the world. I'm Bonnie Wiscombe, a life coach, mom, and entrepreneur, and I'm honored to be your guide as you face this business building adventure full of highs, lows, and everything in between. This is where we help each other find the courage to shine. Hello and welcome back, friends. Today, we're going to be talking about how to start a podcast because for a lot of people, especially coaches, content creators online, a podcast is really, really appealing. You don't have to show your face, although there are versions of podcasts that have videos as well. You don't have to be a good writer or be a good speller. You just have to talk, record your voice and upload it to the internet. It is one of the simplest means of disseminating information, expertise, encouragement, all the things we want to do online, and I love, love, love being a podcaster. So if you're kind of new around here, I have actually been podcasting since 2019. At the start of 2019, I began Outnumbered the Podcast with my co-host Audrey. We recorded Outnumbered for five years and just absolutely loved that show, all about parenting from two chaotic, crazy moms of large families. Go check it out if you haven't, because I still think we have so many really, really irrelevant, amazing episodes up there. And now I do this show, Burning Brightly, which is all about inspiring Christian women to build businesses. Like I mentioned, podcasts are quick, they're easy, they're simple, they're just a really great way for creators to get their message online. Now, helping people start podcasts is actually something I do a lot of in my private coaching practice. I have toyed around with a few podcast products mini courses and that sort of thing. And I actually might develop something a little bit more robust in the future. But this is definitely something I help people with because I've been podcasting for so long because I love it so much. But this episode will just give you a brief overview of what it means to launch a podcast, what that looks like, what kind of time and energy are required, what kind of skills are required. And then in the future, I have a future episode planned for how to organize all your podcast content. So if you do start a podcast and you like help with your workflow, I can help you with that as well. So to start off, let's first talk about the purpose of your show. If you want to start a podcast and you're thinking, yes, where do I start? You're going to start with the purpose. Who are you talking to? What is their big pain point? What are they struggling with? And how will you deliver solutions in every episode? That could look like identifying the demographics of your audience, but I really like identifying the psychographics. So what are they struggling with psychologically? Not necessarily how old are they and what part of the country do they live in, but what are the pain points that keep coming back to them? How do they think? How do they act? What motivates them? Those, I think, are a lot more useful than basic demographics because demographics don't really tell us a lot about their behavior. They tell us about what they already have in their life. So the psychographics of your audience, including their pain point, and then how you're going to offer it. Is it going to be interview form? Are you going to always have guests? Is it going to be just five minute episodes with just a quick little win? Are they going to be longer? Are they going to be storytelling, right? What's the basic overview of how you're going to deliver these solutions every episode? Now, when you come up with the purpose of your podcast, you're going to have to niche it, right? You, you have a very specific segment of your industry that you're going to be talking about. If you need help with the niche, I just did this last week, an episode all about stopping second guessing your niche. So that episode would be a great one to start with before you decide what you wanna do your podcast on, but you've already got a niche for coaching or for content, then you basically just have to decide if your podcast is gonna be exactly the same or slightly different. I like to make my podcast just a teensy bit broader than my main business niche because I want to talk about plenty of things. So for example, my business niche is I target and coach other coaches and content creators who are stuck in their business. They either haven't launched or they've launched and they're not seeing success. That's who I target with my coaching. For my podcast, I talk to any Christian woman who wants to own a business or does own a business. Do you see how that's just a little bit broader? So I can talk about e-commerce and I can talk about physical products. So I can talk about things that are not just coaching and content related because I have experience in those other areas as well. So that is not necessary for you if you have a relatively broad niche, but just make sure you're not pigeonholing yourself too tightly in your podcast 
that you run out of things to say. Although most of us can talk ad nauseum about the niches we pick because we love them and we're passionate about them. But that's a little side note from someone who has been podcasting for a long time. I always tell my clients to ask themselves, could I talk about this topic every week for year after year after year after year? And even if you don't think you could, if it's relatively broad, I say go for it because inspiration comes as you get started. You will probably sit down and brainstorm ideas for your podcast and run out at about 20 or 30 ideas. And you'll think, well, shoot, this isn't even going to get me through a whole year. But once you start going through those ideas and recording them and start working with people and talking to clients and talking to customers and talking to your audience, more ideas will come. That's just how it goes. The more we're in it, the more types of solutions we'll find, the more perspectives we see. It's, it's pretty cool. So that's the first thing we do. We decide who it's for, what we're solving, how we're going to solve it. And then these are the things you need to launch your podcast. It's not a lot of things, but they do require a few steps each. You're going to need a little audio clip called an intro and an outro with music. If you've listened to a podcast, which you are listening right now, you have probably heard an intro and outro. That's the little blurb at the beginning and end of each show that talks about what the show is and or thanks them for listening. We'll get more into that in just a second. So you're going to need an intro and outro. You're going to need the first three episodes recorded and edited and ready to go before launching. The reason we do this is because we don't want to launch and get people excited about it and only give them one episode. It's kind of hard to tell if you're going to like a show by just listening to one episode. But we want to give them multiple, I think three is a pretty great number to start with, so that they can binge them and then really decide, oh yes, this show is for me. Kind of like the difference between when we had to wait every week for a new release of our favorite TV show versus binging it on Netflix. You become a fan much quicker if you binge because you just get in that mindset, you come to really love the creator, you listen to their voice all the time, right? So starting with those three episodes, I've found is a pretty great place to start. Intro, outro, first three episodes, and then you're going to need a hosting platform. We'll talk more about that in a second. You're also going to need a title for your show and possibly a tagline, and then you will need cover art. So we're going to dive into each one of these just for a second so that you can get a good idea of what you need to be ready to create before you start your show. Obviously, launching a podcast is way too much to talk about in one roughly 30-minute episode. There are courses and courses and books and lots of content out there on launching a podcast, but sometimes it's important to just kind of have an overview so you know if it's even something you want to get started on. And if you are willing to be consistent a couple hours a week, then I recommend a podcast to just about anybody because they can be so fun. So let's talk about the title to start. If you know who you're talking to and what kind of pain point you are solving, then we have to craft a title. And just like choosing a name for our business, this can be really painful to do. It can involve a lot of overanalyzing and overthinking and Googling. Don't let it take too long. I recommend with decisions like this that you put a limit on it. Let's say you're starting on Monday and you say, by Friday, I will have a title for this podcast. And then you do this. You brainstorm about 10 different ideas that are relatively decent and make sense and are pretty clear in explaining what your podcast is about. Go to ChatGPT if you need help. Don't take their solutions because AI is always just a little bit too corny in my opinion, but it can help expand your vocabulary a little bit. Think about words that you haven't used before. So come up with about 10 different title ideas. Then choose your top three and or mix and match. So I love having AI help me brainstorm. Then I'll go into that list and pull words from different ones and mix and match them. I do this for titles of trainings all the time. If I do a webinar or a training or something or a course, I will have ChatGPT give me a huge brainstorm list. And then I'll just pull out the words that, that appeal to me and I'll put those together into my own title. Narrow it down to your three favorites and then go do just a little bit of research. You want to Google each one of those. You want to search for each one of those in the podcast app because if they're taken by a podcaster, they're going to be in the podcast app and ensure that no one else is using them and or they're not copyrighted. Now, is it the worst thing in the world if you choose a podcast name that someone else has already used? No, it's not. Just make sure they're not in the same industry. So when I was researching Burning Brightly, I know I saw a few other podcasts that had similar words. I don't know if any of them had it exactly the same, but if there had been another business show called Burning Brightly, I definitely wouldn't have done it. Just be aware of that. You can find something that's similar. Just make sure it's a different niche so that there's no confusion. And then choose your favorite and get some feedback. Again, we don't want to overanalyze and ask everybody and their dog their opinion, but sometimes we're not aware of the way a word sounds or maybe a negative connotation that a friend might clue us into. 
ask a few trusted friends, and then just go with the one that feels the best. So that's our title. Now, a tagline is totally optional. Not a lot of podcasts have them, but what I've noticed is the podcasts that use kind of clever titles that might not immediately explain what the podcast is about could benefit from a tagline that explains it. So that's what I do for a title and tagline. Now let's talk about your intro and your outro. This is largely a matter of preference. What I like to tell my clients to do is to just go out and listen to some of your favorite podcasts. Listen to the intro, listen to the outro of a couple of different shows and decide, is there a particular style that you like? Do you like to sound upbeat and excited? Do you like to sound a little bit more dramatic or mysterious? What style music do you like? You might get kind of a rough idea of what you want yours to sound like, and then you can just kind of mimic that style. Generally in the intro, what we're doing is we are obviously introducing the show. We're telling them just a little bit about who we are, why they wanna listen, we're keeping it super short. In my experience, I find that 30 second intros and outros are about as long as you want to go. Shorter is even better because nobody comes for the intro and the outro, but you wanna add it every time because if someone is listening for the first time to that episode, you wanna give them a good overview of what the show is about. So intro to you, purpose of the podcast, inspire them to listen to the whole thing in your intro. And then the outro, you want to thank them for listening, obviously, and then give them one, maybe two calls to action. Do not ask them to do a million things. Just ask them to do one thing, like schedule a call with me, click the link in the show notes to get the freebie, share this episode with a friend, leave a review. Don't do all of those, but just pick one, like I said, maybe two to incentivize them to take action after the show. Once you've created your intro and outro, do a little outline, practice saying them out loud, practice recording them, and then you're going to want to add music. My favorite resource for podcast music is called Audio Jungle. So go Google that. They have all kinds of styles. You're going to be very tempted to just get lost in there for hours. Don't do that. Again, set a timer for yourself. Give yourself an hour, two hours to find your top three and then play them a couple of times until you decide on the one you like the best. Make sure that you pay for your music. You probably know what the free music files are on YouTube because all the amateur YouTubers use the same ones. So you don't want yours to be all over the internet. You also don't want to run into copyright problems. So when you're purchasing it, make sure that you have permission to use it for a podcast every single week. And it will tell you when you check out what you have permission to use that music for. All right, so we've got our title, our tagline, if we so desire. We've got our intro, our outro, and we've got music to go with it. Now it's time to talk about how to combine all of these elements. How in the world do you record and edit your episode and add music and make it sound good? You use a program called Descript. I am in love with Descript. Let me just tell you that I have had many years using Adobe Premiere, using iMovie, using a million other programs that are so much more difficult. Now, are you going to create a Sundance film worthy production on Descript? No, you are not. That is what Premiere is for. Descript is perfect for everyday podcasters. It gives you a place to record your episode. It gives you a place to edit it right in the app. And then you can actually publish it with one button directly to your hosting platform. I'm a huge fan. It costs less than $150 a year to use this program. So highly, highly, highly recommend. I'll link it in the show notes. It's what I tell everybody to use. First of all, you can record both audio and or video in Descript. You could record virtually with a co-host or an interviewee. They have the capability to do that. And then you edit directly in the app and they edit using a text-based editor. So if you've ever edited an audio file or a video file before, you usually edit it based on the audio wave file, right? You're looking at the ups and downs of your voice and you have to kind of guess where the words are. You don't do that with Descript. As I'm talking right now, recording this in Descript to you, it is creating an automatic transcription of my words. So if I say, um, I just go in and find the um and delete the um in the transcript and it cuts out the file. It's brilliant, I'm telling you, it does the same thing with video. So there's no cutting and splicing. I mean, you can have more power over it if you choose to, but if you just wanna edit the text, they make it very, very easy to do so. It's super beginner friendly. And then you can very easily, once you've recorded your intro and your outro, you can very easily drop your music in there. You can cut and splice it however you want. You can fade it in, fade it out. It is the simplest program I know out there, so. That's the one I recommend. The final thing you need before we want to start recording episodes is your cover art. That is the little square piece of artwork that shows up every time someone listens to or searches for your show in a podcast app. So it needs to be square. It needs to be 
bold. It needs to be very clear because we're seeing this on a teeny tiny little square on a cell phone. If it's not bold and easily readable, it will not make sense to people on a teeny tiny little phone. The easiest way to make your cover art is to go to Canva and search podcast cover art in their templates and they will come up with a million templates. Don't take any of the templates and just use them exactly as they are, right? Because again, you will find many more people that have the same template being used through Canva, but make it your own. Change the colors, change the pictures, change the fonts. Just use their ideas to spark your imagination. I recommend bright, bold colors, but no more than two or three. I recommend big fonts that are easy to read. Again, no more than two fonts. And I also recommend using a picture of your face. Human beings always respond best to smiling, happy faces of other human beings. I know this is a struggle for some people. They don't want to put their faces out there, and I get that. And it's not essential, but if you're at all comfortable with putting your face on your cover art, do it. It will result in more clicks most of the time. If not, you can just use some sort of graphic or even a different picture of a flower or something. I don't know, anything that works with your podcast topic, but faces tend to do the best. Once we've got all these pieces in place, it is now time to record our episodes. So this is how I plan out my episodes. I, like I said, will be creating another episode all about my workflow so I can go into a little bit more detail. But essentially, I brainstorm ideas for my podcast two times a year. So I will sit down. I very often do this on an airplane because it's my favorite place to brainstorm. There's not a lot to do and there's a lot of white noise. So I'll sit down and I very often pray ahead of time so God can send me some ideas of what he wants me to talk about. And then I just start writing down ideas and I don't edit them and I don't cross them out and I don't tell myself they're stupid. I just write down everything that comes to me. And I usually have at least 50 to 60 ideas and I will probably use about half of them. And then six months later, I will brainstorm again. Not all of them are episode worthy, but it does give me easily enough to fill half the year. And then you get to decide your recording schedule. Some people love to record every week. Some people only want to do it once a month. And so they bang out four episodes in just one sitting. You decide. I recommend trying a couple of different options. Maybe you try weekly and then you try doing two batch recordings a month. Maybe you decide you only want to record and publish one episode a month because that's all you can handle. That's totally fine. But consistency is important. So whatever you decide with at the beginning, I recommend you continue doing. Two to four times a month. I will sit down and write an outline for one of these ideas that I've brainstormed, and then I will record it and edit it. I'll get on a little bit of a soapbox here when it comes to outlining your episode. Please don't write a script for yourself. It's going to be so tempting to do, especially if you don't have experience speaking while recording. You're going to feel like you mess up a million times and you're going to have tons of filler words. It's all normal. It's all okay. You will get better as you practice. The more you practice, the better you get. But if you want to do some practice episodes where you just ramble into a microphone, do it. And then you can just delete them. But please don't write a script because people can always tell. I can always tell when someone is reading. It's really distracting and you kind of sound like a robot. So that's what I always tell people. I mean, obviously, you get to do what you want. But that's my pro tip is to just write a rough outline and then go for it. When it comes to editing your episode, like I said, Descript makes it very, very easy. You can outsource it if it's something you just don't have time for. But I actually think it's kind of fun. And it might not be worth your money to outsource for a while until you're making more in your business. Just depends on the kind of time and money you have available. Once you're done editing in Descript, like I said, you can just press one button to publish it directly to your hosting platform. And then you fill out the show notes and schedule it for the day you want to go live. Now that brings us to that hosting platform I talked about. Choosing a hosting platform really is not a super important choice. There's a million of them out there and most of them do the exact same thing, but I do like a platform that has good analytics. I want to be able to see who's listening, how long they're listening for. I want kind of some robust reporting. I have heard really good things about Libsyn, but I've never used that one. I do have experience with both Castos and Captivate, and I think both of those are equally good hosts. So if you want to do a little research and a little Googling, go for it. Otherwise, just pick one of those get started. Not a decision you have to sit on for a long time. Maybe check out the payment plans and pick one that that works for your budget. What this program does is it hosts your podcast. So you're going to upload your podcast to this platform and then it's going to create what they call an RSS feed. That RSS feed is where the podcast apps fetch your show. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify are always scanning these RSS feeds looking for a new show. And when I publish one, the podcast app grabs it from the RSS feed and puts it on their app. No matter where anyone is listening, 
they can hear it in the app of their choice once you publish it on that RSS feed, which is really nice. It would be a pain in the butt if you had to go separately post a podcast to all these different apps, but you don't have to do that. Once you pick a hosting platform, you're going to need to set up your account. That will take a few minutes the first time. You have to input all the details of your show, the title, the cover art. You're going to want to input a description. I recommend that being very keyword rich, lots and lots of keywords, right? So what people might be Googling, searching for when they look for a show like yours, put lots of those words in there and add a link to your website if you have one and or email so people can contact you. And then each time you upload an episode, all you have to do is upload it to your host from Descript, add a title, add show notes, schedule it for when you're ready to go. Some people do create a blog post for each individual podcast episode. This is a great way to get more of that SEO juice, more of that search engine optimization juice, meaning traffic from Google coming to your site and people finding your podcast. But if that overwhelms you right now, do not worry about it. Just get the show published and you can come back to that later. Now your show notes, you probably have seen show notes for a podcast before, are anything that help people, help your listeners find the episode and learn from it. So that's another place to put a lot of great keywords for your episode and links to anything that might help them take action on the episode. So maybe it's a freebie that I mentioned in the episode. Maybe it's a link to my website or to my calendar to book with me. Maybe it's some other tool or resource I've mentioned in the episode. I will link that in the show notes as well. The trick is to get them taking action on your information. And so those are the list of resources you can give them. Now, once you have those first three podcast episodes recorded and uploaded, then you get to create your launch plan. Now, when I call it a launch plan, people get kind of freaked out because that sounds big and grandiose, and admittedly, it can be, but it doesn't have to be grandiose. There are a million different ways to do this, but essentially what we're doing is creating hype for our show before it goes live. We wanna incentivize as many people as possible to listen to those three episodes so that the podcast apps start seeing, oh, look, there's some traffic to the show. Maybe it's interesting. Kind of helps our show get seen a little bit more. I suggest choosing a launch day. So let's say you have everything done and you decide to launch a month out. You put that on your calendar and you schedule those three episodes to go live that day, 12 a.m. of that day. So anytime that you talk about it on that day going forward, the episodes will be live. And then you just talk about it everywhere. That's the launch plan. I'm gonna give you a few ideas, but again, don't let them overwhelm you. Don't let them stress you out. You don't have to do all of them, but the more lead time you can give yourself to create kind of a launch plan, the better you can get the word out as much as possible. One idea is getting interviewed on other people's podcasts, YouTube channels, Instagram channels, anywhere that people have an audience, you wanna get in front of them so that they know about your show. You can do a giveaway for anyone who leaves a review on your podcast or proves that they shared the show, right? So if they share it on Instagram and they tag you, then you can enter them to win some sort of a giveaway, gift card or something. One of my favorite things to do that we did on Outnumbered a lot is to read reviews on the podcast itself. If someone leaves you a review, then on the next show that you record, you can read that review out loud. And then the reviewer gets this lovely warm and fuzzy knowing that their review was read and it helps other people realize it's a great show. So that's a really fun way to incentivize reviews. You can also pay or give some sort of incentive to ambassadors for them to spread the word, especially if you have friends or family members who have followings on Twitter or TikTok or somewhere, get them to talk about your show. And you can do this just informally. You can also create kind of a brand program if you're really ambitious but just getting the word out to other people who can then share it with their audience is pretty brilliant. You can run ads to your podcast if you've done that in the past or you know how to run ads. You can work on building your email list ahead of time, which you should always be doing, and then let your email list know about your launch date, know about exciting things happening. Maybe you do a live video on social media ahead of time where people can ask questions about the podcast. That way you can interact with your audience and even get ideas for future episodes. So lots and lots of ideas. I'm actually gonna include in the show notes of this episode, a link to a really awesome launch plan that I found online. But again, it's very involved, so do not stress yourself out. Your podcast is not gonna flop and totally fail if you don't have a big launch. It just does help to get more people listening towards the beginning. So essentially that is how you launch a podcast. You get those handful of things in place, your title, your cover art, your intro, outro, your podcast host, those first three episodes, and then you come up with a doable, realistic launch plan and you get people listening. It's so, so, so fun. A few final tips before I leave you today. Please keep it simple, 
especially if you have other things going on in your life and this is not your full-time gig, consistency is key. So if you can't consistently do all the things I told you about today, then just stick with the things that you can. There are some weeks where all I do is hit record and bare minimum edits or I send it out to my editor and I upload. That's it. And some weeks I do a blog post to go with it so that I have that search juice. Sometimes I talk about it on Instagram everywhere. Sometimes I email it out to my list. Sometimes I put it on my Facebook group. Sometimes I put it on my personal Facebook profile. There are so many ways to share about the podcast once it's done. I just don't do all of it every week because I can't. So decide what you can do and then go from there. Also, make sure you are jam packing your episode with value. It doesn't have to be an hour long or two hours long. I don't know who listens to two hour long episodes, but make it digestible for your audience, especially if your audience is busy people, busy moms or whatever. But when you give your listeners a solid win and some really great wisdom every episode, they will just keep coming back. They will love you for it. So again, not overly long, but really, really full of value. And then here is a tip that I actually personally have yet to do, but I really want to try it. One of these days I'm going to remember and try, and that is to give your listeners a taste of your episode up front. So very often an episode just starts with the intro, but if people are coming back and they've heard your intro a million times, it's not as compelling to sit around and listen as if you put a hook in the beginning. And the hook that I love is when people take a snippet of the show itself and put it right at the beginning. This happens a lot with the true crime podcasts. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, where they'll say, and then she opened her shower and screamed. And you're like, what? What happened? They put that right at the beginning of the show and you're going to listen through who knows how many ads and who knows how many little jingles interrupting the show because you have to find out what happened to the woman who opened her shower curtain. That's what we want to do with our show too. Just give them a little taste at the beginning and get them hooked so that they will stick around and listen as much as possible. Last tip, do not worry about filler words. You are going to say um 1001 times. I promise you. It just happens all the time. I personally don't say um anymore. I've trained it out of myself. Instead, I say now and I say so. Listen for it. <laughs> I try to I try to edit them out sometimes, but we all have filler words. It's human nature. And without any filler words, we would sound kind of stupid. But if there are some that when you listen back, they really bother you, just focus on eliminating them. One of my favorite tips is to write my filler words that I'm trying to eliminate on a sticky note on my computer and then write words that I can replace them with. This can work with really anything. On Outnumbered, I used to always respond to Audrey by saying, absolutely, absolutely, when she said something I agreed with. So I had a sticky note on my computer that said, no, absolutely. And there was like a line drawn through it. Instead, say 100%. I totally agree with you. Yep. Anything but absolutely. And it got me out of the habit of saying that. The solution is always more practice here. So do your best to eliminate those filler words and just know you will get better as you go. Side note, Descript has a one button filler word remover. So you can go into the edit button and click filler word remover and Descript pulls them all out. It's pretty amazing. But again, it is a machine. So I recommend checking its work, listening through, making sure it did a good job. But Descript is the best when it comes to recording and editing simply, easily, without hassle. So go check it out. Now get out there and share your knowledge with the podcasting world. We'll talk next week, friends. Are you ready to start or grow your dream business? Click the link in the show notes to download the free starter guide to building a business or to schedule a free coaching call with me. And if you loved this episode, don't forget to leave a review and share it with a friend who might be feeling the call to burn a little brighter.